Hi, everyone. I'm Garrity, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about performance and React. So I picked this topic because I think you can learn a lot about how something works when you figure out how it breaks. Um, I'm going to throw in a famous programmer quote from Donald Knuth where he says, premature optimization is the root of all evil. I want to throw that out there to say, like, I'm going to talk about performance, but don't worry about performance until you have a problem. Um, I think that quote really overstates things, but I think what he's getting at is maybe especially as a beginner when you're writing code and you're worrying about how fast it is all the time, you're going to end up with code that's harder to read and harder to debug and harder to maintain. And worst of all, your code's not even going to necessarily be any faster. So I'm going to do a talk about performance, but like put this in your back pocket. Um, and when you need it, hopefully it'll be helpful. So when is React slow? Um, essentially, it's when uh, you're forcing your program to work harder than it should. And the example I'm going to talk about today is um, when you're rendering large lists and you're kind of forcing it to re-render unnecessarily. So um, I made an application to kind of demo the concepts that I'm going to talk about today. And essentially what it is is, um, if I pull this down, it's like a color palette, and it's 2,000 colors. Um, and you can hover over to delete an element. And so if I click to delete this element, you can see right now it's very slow. So I like click, re-render. So there's like a visible lag happening. Um, I just want to quickly show you the code before I get started. It's just a, a UL, and it maps through, and it makes um, a color component and gives it a key value of math.random. And this is like the essential part um, that we're going to talk about is this key value. So right now, um, you see these random numbers in the left-hand side, and that's the key value that you're seeing displayed there. So um, first question, how do you know it's slow? Well, I just showed you it feels really slow. You click, you have to wait a few seconds, it re-renders. Um, but now, what are you going to do? First thing you got to do is you got to measure it. Um, oops, sorry. So I'm going to just quickly say Chrome DevTools has really awesome um, tools you can use when you have performance issues. It's totally outside the scope of this talk, but learn how to use your Chrome DevTools. Um, but what I do want to talk about is um, performance tools that React has built in. And to use these tools, the first thing you have to do is npm install. You import it into your code. And then the important thing is at the bottom of the slide where you expose the tool on the window. And that's going to let you um, use it in your console. So first thing you're going to want to do to get your measurements is use these two commands. It's perf.start. And then you do whatever you want to measure on your site. And then perf.stop. So I'm going to just demo that really quickly here. If I pull this back up, I'm just going to refresh so we have a fresh page. And so it's perf.start. And then I'm going to do some action. Here I want to delete the first element. So I click, and then perf.stop. OK, so we have measurements. Second step. It's going to be very easy. Um, Two methods that the perf tools give you is print operations and uh, print wasted. Print operation is going to show you every manipulation that happened on the DOM. Um, and print wasted, I'm going to stash away for a moment, and we'll revisit in a second. So if I were to do uh, perf dot print operations here, so remember, it's printing out every DOM manipulation. And I just deleted one element in the collection. So it gives you tons of information. You can see here. I'm not going to scroll all the way up. But what I do want you to know, and see if I can, can I zoom? Woo. I can. <laughs> is, oh my god, OK, sorry. <laughs> is that it's making 7,997 DOM operations um, to delete that one element. So now it makes sense why we're seeing that visible lag happening. It's doing almost 8,000 operations to remove one element. 
but why is that happening? <laughs> so to understand why that's happening, I think we just need to take a quick look at reconciliation. And reconciliation is generally just the process um, that React does of finding the minimum number of changes it needs to do to make the uh, virtual DOM match the actual DOM um, and to make them identical. And React uses keys and the value you give your key um, to do that efficiently. So if you remember, right now our key is math.random. So to walk through what's happening when we use a random key, the user clicks and deletes an element in our array. And so this top line is the current DOM, and the bottom line is what gets re-rendered. So when the user um, deletes that element, React goes and looks for a key value in the new DOM of 0.09. And it doesn't find it because we're using math.random. Every time it re-renders, each element is just getting a brand new random key. Um, and when it doesn't find that key value, it just assumes it's gone, that that element's like disappeared. And so it deletes the, the node. Um, and it's gonna continue to do this all the way through your array. Doesn't find a matching one that has 0.89 and so on and so forth. And then it has to create brand new elements um, to re-render. So that's why we're getting, I mean, I have 2,000 elements in my array, but I have the X. Like, there's other elements kind of nested on top of those color blocks, and that's why we're seeing 8,000 DOM operations to delete the one element. So I'm going to take it out of, like, theoretical land and change this to just be the index um, from our map function, which I'm sure some of you have used. It's, like, not unreasonable to use an index as a key value. When I re-render, <coughs> and you can see the key values have changed to be the index of the array. So if I were to do the same thing, perf.start, uh, delete the first element, perf.stop, and then perf.print operations. So we can see now we're down to making 2,000 manipulations on the DOM. And you can see, like, it feels a little faster. And we can see that in the numbers. Um, so let's walk through what's happening when you're using an index base key. And I will note that the performance of this using the index is going to vary wildly if you're deleting the first element of your array versus your last element. Um, but let's say the user deletes the first element. So now React looks in the new DOM and says, OK, is there a node there with the key value of 0? This time, it finds it. But then it says, oh, I'm a yellow square. Now I need to be a blue square. So it needs to update its styles so it's rendering the correct color. And that's going to keep happening down the line because um, we've deleted the first element. Everything after it has to be re-indexed and shuffled up one spot. <coughs> and this is the interesting part. The user deleted the first element in our array, but React goes to the end, looks for a node with the key value of 3, and doesn't find it. And that's actually the child that is getting deleted. Um, so it's kind of maybe the opposite of my, what you might intuit. So lastly, <coughs> I want to show you if we use the ID. Um, and I'll give you a spoiler alert that this is going to be our best case scenario. So <coughs> perf.start, I click delete the first element, perf.stop, and then perf.print operations. And we're down to one um, DOM operation. And you can see, again, we're like, it's feeling faster. It's feeling good. So in this case, the user deletes that first element, reacts as, OK, is there a node with key value of 0? Doesn't find it, removes it, moves on, matches 1 to 1. This time, the color hasn't changed because our um, array hasn't been reordered. <coughs> So that is why we're seeing only one DOM manipulation um, on this operation. However, if we were to revisit that second method, perf.print wasted, we're going to see something else happening here. So if you can see here, um, and I should explain, perf.print wasted shows all of the work done on the DOM where um, no changes ended up being made. So in this case, there was 1,900 
199 times that elements were looked at, but nothing was actually changed in the re-render. <coughs> um, and of course, the reason that this is, and I can come back here, is that our keys are stable because they're off the ID of the element. They're not changing when we're re-rendering like they were in the last example. Um, so React is allowed to kind of compare the same nodes to one another. It's, it's comparing the correct nodes to one another. But the comparison itself is unnecessary. Um, if we're deleting the first element here, it's not changing anything about the elements coming after it. So React doesn't actually have to look at the other 1,999 DOM elements. They're going to stay the same. I know this as a developer, but how do we tell React that doesn't actually need to um, do that comparison? And this is where um, pure components can come in and help you. So all components have a life cycle, have life cycle methods, and should component update is one of those. And it it's a function that um, returns true or false telling React if it needs to update the component. Um, and pure components implement should component update for you. Um, and it uses a shallow comparison of both props and state. So if your component receives the same props and state, um, nothing will change. And it's very easy to use. All we would have to do here is go to our color component, that's little square. And it's as simple, really, as <coughs> changing this. And then we'll re-render um, perf.start, delete, perf.stop, perf.print wasted. And you can see we're down to one instance count. And this is the um, nav bar up here that you're seeing as wasted time. So a couple of things to keep in mind that will help you um, if you are using pure components is that um, you want your child components to be pure, like the child components of your pure component, um, because com should component update will skip over uh, the subtree um, for prop updates. Um, and also, uh, I would suggest uh, using immutable data structures. Um, and this just helps you kind of eliminate a class of bugs um, that you can kind of run into, such as an element not re-rendering when you would like it to re-render. Um, so those are things that will help you kind of skirt around the gotchas. And finally, to recap, I didn't actually touch on this one because I'm trying to go fast. Um, but you, when you're rendering a big unordered list or ordered list in React, you want to keep the list items as their own component and render them in. Um, use IDs for keys. If you're not reordering your collection, it's not a big deal to use indexes, but um, IDs will help you kind of avoid this altogether. And implement pure components if you're seeing that you're getting a lot of wasted time on your um, re-render. And that's it. Here are some further reading. Thank you for listening. <laughs>